welcome to the Race for Eight Men's Finals in Houston, Texas. My name is Dave Vincent, alongside David Fink. It's Nadi Alvarado up against Charlie Shanks. Charlie from Ireland, Nadi from Southern California, Spring Valley Lake, California, matter of fact. And they are going up against each other one more time. We remember that first matchup in, in Idaho mm -hmm. when Nadi Alvarado got stunned by Charlie Shanks. One of the best matches I've seen uh, in the last couple years at that Jake Plummer event, and then Nadi came back and defeated Charlie in that match. That's right, Dave. Charlie had match point in that match. He was just one shot, one crack away from taking down Nadi Alvarado, but it was Nadi Alvarado who came back, as he's done so many times, won that match, advanced to the final there, and the second time they played, Dave, was for third place at the Players' Championship in Seattle. Nadi just crushing Charlie Shanks with a broken nose. So Charlie Shanks, Dave, is playing about the best ball I've seen him play, particularly with this hard ball. He's run through this field here of elite players, and Nadi Alvarado, Dave, has been tested a couple of times, even in his opening round against local favorite Adam Bernhard, came back against Emmett Fischot, and then, of course, came back to him a 15 to one first game loss today to take out Aaron Garner. So, Dave, it will be a first, just as there's been so many firsts thus far throughout this event. We've seen qualifiers making the semifinals, now we're going to have a first time ever race champion. Neither of these guys have ever won a race title. Both have been in race finals before. We are going to have the announcement from Anthony Celesto and his referee, Emmett Pichot, as they give us the announcement here in front of this amazing crowd in Houston, Texas, Dave, as we will turn the sights and sounds over to them here momentarily as the crowd is still shuffling in. Natty Alvarado Jr. from California. Hands together for Natty Alvarado. And the crowd very respectful here. From Northern Ireland. Actually from Armagh. We'd like to thank Houston representing Club and the Clan Erin. on a great event. And best of luck to both competitors. Celesto giving the announcements here. Wants to thank all the sponsors and the WPH for putting on a zero, great event here. Zero. And here Looking it is. For a, a thumbs up for his announcement. He didn't get one though. Not for me. <laughs> Left out a lot of stuff that he should have said. Point. But that's all things that we'll take to the drawing board, eight. Dave, as we do after every event. We critique. One, it's always constructive. Zero. Now Nadi starts off, Dave, with a quick. First strike, kill shot. Side out. And you see, Dave, that'll be the pattern in this match. Yeah, the first okay. point was just three shots. The second rally, four shots. Zero, one. Spoke to Charlie, point. Dave, both as a player and announcer, trying to figure out what he does on that serve, one, Dave, to carry one. the short line and also keep the ball down off the crack. He said, I'll leave out some expletives. Why would I tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> there would have been we'll some. We'll do that again. It went in between his legs. There would have been some bleeping, though, had I quoted him verbatim. <laughs> of course, Dave, he's Irish, so you can't really get through a sentence without a few bleeps. One, one. Charlie telling me, Dave, <laughs> that when he worked at his office in Ireland, Short. it's so common to use four letter words that it's just part of the language, but then he got to New York Second and serve. people thought he was some kind of convict <laughs> for talking like that. Saw it down. Really quiet in there. Charlie gets the point. Nadi was looking for the hinder. Nadi holding onto that ball a little longer. That's another little trick. Two, one. They know that Charlie's hot right now, Dave. Well, Charlie is the type of guy, Dave, that'll never change his expression. In fact, when he lost the U.S. Check Open it. final to Robbie McCarthy, 11-9, Dave, you couldn't tell if the match was just starting or it just ended. But internally, Dave, he does not like these tactics. And I'll tell you, it <laughs> bothers him. He'll tell you about it, Two, believe me. One. But he doesn't like when his opponent's stalling him between serves or holding the ball or talking to the referee. Sure. Or walking up to the service line, acting like he didn't realize the ball just hit Second his opponent. You mean the front wall, walking all the way to the front wall, yeah. Dave Nadi saves those retrieve attempts only for the finals. Really, 
Rarely Three, does he one. go for a ball that gets behind him. And that time you saw him go for it. Just over the line. Charlie is in the front court right now, and he is keeping Nadia Alvarado out of camera view. You know, Dave, in tennis, you only get so many chances to break serve, and you have to take advantage of those break points. Four, Very one. similar when you're playing these guys who are great servers. When you get an opportunity to earn a side out, you have to take advantage of it. Nadi um, made that error on the previous point, but now this. comes back in with a great reverse. That was not just a great reverse. That uh -huh. thing was just broken over. If we can take a look on a replay there. So a super great reverse. I mean, you heard the, the crowd out here just let out a huge moan. That ball barely over the line. Nadi going back into the corner and gets point. a point. That's a great shot for Nadi there. I saw it good. Watch what, ball look at that ball great. break over. It's a short serve. Oh, the two oh, line I thought judges. That was good. Line yeah. judges overturned that it, serve right there from Nadi. Now Nadi's doing that thing that he does, and Charlie's just walking away from it. Can you go with video replay here, Dave? No. Okay. But let's watch that serve. Well, I think it was short. I saw it as short. So yeah. This is a second serve. I agree with that One, call. I thought it was four. actually on the inside of the line. It looked good live and looked short in replay. And Nadi stays down, and Charlie, kind of an in-your-face move. I could hit this anywhere, but I'm going to hit it right at you as hard as I can. Well, Nadi, one, I, I think was too late getting up there, because I think he could have got a hand on that. Well, I think Nadi had conceded that the point was over. Charlie Shanks is a machine right now. Well, really, Dave, that sums up his game. He is a machine. He's got a system, just like Nadi has a system, but Charlie knows exactly what he wants to do, particularly Five, when he's one. the server. This is the best two out of three to 15, Sharp. and the tiebreaker is played to 15 as well, win by two. Second serve. That hit you, Charlie? Uh, he is a bit off the side. He's off to the side. Just check the ball, though. Five, one. Score here is five to one. Scoreboard said two for a while, but that one point was taken away when Nadia Alvarado had that reverse. I'm sorry, I didn't. The serve reversed. We'll play it again. I didn't see it, but I'll look for it. One, five. Not sure what the call there five, was. Uh, Charlie hit Naughty with his swing, his follow through. Okay. Should have, you're going to replay it, should just be unavoidable, but they're being nice about it, I guess. That was an amazing reverse. Charlie, Charlie was, shanks on the serve, and Naughty punches the three while return, and Naughty, or excuse me, Charlie flat kills that six, from 37 one. feet. Charlie's playing about as good as anybody I've ever seen right now. I agree with that. Not a good shot there from Charlie, though. Well, now he's back in it, Dave. Look at that. We'll see, Dave, if that rally is a momentum changer because Charlie had a very easy opportunity from in front of the foot fault line. He didn't execute. Just mark that down One, here, Dave. Now he comes in to serve at 6-1. That right here, Dave, should have been Charlie's rally. Instead, he lets Nadi back in. And remember, Dave, that would have made the score 7-1 in favor of Charlie Shanks. Now, instead, it's 1-6. Nadi comes in to serve, and Nadi scores the first point to make it 2-6. Nadi's now claiming the floor is wet here. Could be a stop of play, and this is the part Sorry. where Charlie doesn't like the gamesmanship, but that's part of this four. <laughs> I think slowly moving up our list here, on referees, we should give a nod to Emmett Fischoff, who's actually called pretty good mm -hmm. games here during this race event, and he's actually been our main referee during well, the, the stops here this weekend. What I like about Emmett as a referee, Dave, is he's Not enthusiastic sure. about Score refereeing, and he's two, also six. willing to admit when he's made a mistake, and he tries to improve constantly. And I think that's the best thing you can ask for as a referee. Nadi gets that serve now. Another point here. Now, Dave, remember, 6-1, Charlie had that Three, easy opportunity six. to make it 7-1, at which point he would have been completely rolling. Now, all of a sudden, Dave, 
things have changed. Charlie gets a good break there. It was a very good serve. And how frustrating that is that, Dave, as a good server to hit one of your best serves and your opponent just barely gets it back and you have no Six, chance to play three. the return. Six or three. Charlie might go to the left. Here goes to the right instead. Point. And he gets another free point, another ace you might want to mark down for Charlie. We've seen six aces collectively between the two out of the ten points that you see out here. Seven, three. And the, you're going to see a serve fest. Look at that. Return from Nadia Alvarado, who clearly has fan support here in Houston. Dave, I know that you've played with Nadia Alvarado Sr. You told me you've never seen someone flat roll the ball that many seven. times in one match. I think Nadia Jr. has that same ability. He literally hits three or four flat rollouts per game. And there's the announcing curse in, at a bad time for Nadia. That was one of the worst shots I've ever seen Nadia hit. Seven, three. But then again, I've only been watching him for 20 years. <laughs> so what do you know? Nadi goes with a dive, two wall floater, three wall floater. Oh, hold it. Oh, and Charlie doesn't like that call, but I think it's probably the right one. You see Nadi playing Charlie's left here. What's Dave, that? He must have seen something on the tapes. He, he was right behind you, couldn't see it. He held up for one second, just one split second. Now Charlie and Nadia are kind of having a little thing back and forth. Nadia was Seven, telling three. Charlie I was there. Well, that's not necessary. Well, really. Nadia didn't have to do that, but he's trying to get into Charlie's head. Right now, see, now you see these, these pumps here. This is Charlie getting back at Nadia. This is getting good, Eight, Dave. Three. Similar to actually the plumber final where it almost crossed that line of good to Short. a little <laughs> bit unprofessional. Well, I think the sport kind of needs it, Dave. Well, that's what Second people serve. say until there's actually a tantrum, a tantrum thrown, and then there's threats made of suspensions and fines and other various punishments. <coughs> so I guess you can have your cake and eat it, too. I love writing Three, those eight. punishment letters and signing the bottom and commenting just before I write them how great it all was while well, it happened. <laughs> oh, an amazing shot from Donnie. Dave, I don't see anybody in handball taking that ball on the way up, pivoting it off their back foot, and driving the ball two inches high into the corner. Nadi does it consistently. I mean, look at this, Dave. Most people back up and hit a three-wall shot there or float that back to the ceiling. That's all part of Nadi's system, though. He well, said he studies the angles, and that's a shot he can make consistently. I've seen him do that. He's into the wide corner kills. That was sort of a paddle corner kill, but he just does it with a little flick of the wrist. Four, eight. And Charlie's saying that hit him in the Can leg on the way in. All right, check the ball, please. Dave, have you ever seen two players hit each other this many times with the ball halfway through a game? Let's take a look and see if Charlie does move into the shot here. Not he's saying that he it. moved into it, and that's why he got hit. Okay, okay, I'll keep my eye on it. What do you think? And Dave, we've heard a lot of booing so. there from the crowd. I'm not quite sure what they were booing for. Four serves eight. But the booing came 10 seconds after Charlie well, said it hit his leg. I think the crowd just realized that Nadi didn't get a point for that. And that's been a shot Nadi has struggled with from time to time, Dave, is not getting himself in the right position to play that back wall shot when the ball comes from the ceiling. Eight, four. That's just an amazing shot there, Dave. Just about two inches short for Charlie Shanks, but absolutely unbelievable. Second serve. Wow, just a laser from Naughty on that return. It is 
as you know, most players come into the return of serve from Charlie and just paddle their return. Naughty goes with a aggressive 84 mile an hour return, mm -hmm. one inch high. Second serve. And now guys, these guys, they've exchanging rollouts on the return of serve. I'll tell you one thing that we just really haven't seen much Eight of, if, if at all, is a ceiling shot. I don't recall the last time I even seen one. I don't think you will see many in this match. Shut up. Charlie had a good look at that kill shot opportunity for the ninth point, but he just skips it. Four eight. See what this ball does. Should be a big setup for Naughty. I like how Naughty knows exactly where Charlie is at, and he pushes that ball right down the wall and gets his fifth point. Well, Dave, the problem for Naughty Alvarado in Junior in the finals of these race events has been putting two good games together. What we've seen from Naughty in the finals that he's made is one real sloppy, slow game, and then the second game coming back and and almost pulling out the second game. Here today, though, he looks really strong early in this first game. But you remember, Dave, in the Plummer event against Luis Moreno, Nadia Alvarado had nothing in that first game, pushed Luis somewhat in the second game. In Fresno against Sean, he was Five, blown out in the first eight. game and nearly forced a tiebreaker. But right now, Dave, he looks fresher than he did in either of those finals. Oh, that almost was a crack serve for Nadia. Overhand tomahawk power skip. shot, skip in from Charlie Shanks now, six point four. Nadia Alvarado, who seems to somewhat put some type of water on that fire that Charlie had early. Well, you know, Charlie's missed two Six, kill shot opportunities eight. in the last two rallies. And you don't want to give your opponent points by Charlie. skipping the ball in when he's serving. The old adage, Dave, is to take more chances when it's your serve because you can't lose a point. Second serve. Charlie has now skipped two consecutive balls and has given Nadi two points. That serve is not deep enough there. And Charlie does go to the roof there, though. Naughty has Charlie pinned, goes to the corner. Charlie digs it out. Charlie oh, catches nice. it. And Dave, that's the first round of applause we've heard for this amazing play in the entire match. And it was because Charlie calls a double bounce on himself. And then I know you have a problem with that. Oh, I have and a problem with it. Explain why you have a problem with that. Well, we're watching some of the most amazing handball, two of the best athletes in the world hitting just unbelievable shots, rally after rally, and you hear nothing. Seven, and yet Charlie Shanks dives in and calls an obvious double bounce on himself, and this gallery finally puts their hands together. Why aren't their hands put together, Dave, for these flat kills from 38 feet? That's the sloppy handball there. That was a Toddy Severa shot. And Naughty rolls it out on the next one, almost as if he heard you. Now both guys squandering chances in that rally. Ultimately, Naughty puts away the back wall shot. 8-8. Eight, eight. We're all together at 8 here. Naughty was down 2-8 to eight early. Make that 9-8. to eight. Naughty now in the lead. Dave, we've seen a lot of unretirements in sports from a lot of different athletes, but have you ever seen an unretirement where the unretiree came back to win, to become the best? Chart. We saw Joe Namath come back, Dave. That wasn't, didn't go so well. Mike Second Tyson serve. came back. It also didn't go well. Naughty really backing into Charlie there. Charlie just rolls it out down the right wall. Now he's serving at 8-9. to nine. Two games to 15. Breaker also to 15. Eight, nine. Win by two. This one could go over time. Nice get from Naughty, and he puts Charlie in a defensive spot. Well, Charlie's all over the floor here. Naughty... Is making him dig for it, and then he does the fist pump. 
and the crowd likes to play there, Dave. Well, what an amazing paddle recoil. Charlie's momentum is carrying him towards the left, which generally means you have to flip that ball up high, but Charlie has enough control with that paddle nine, nine. to re-kill. Look at this, Dave. Charlie's going to his left. Normally, you float that ball up two wall, back to the right. And Charlie's hustle now has earned him a side out and a quick point. Naughty calling for the ball here. 10, nine. Dave, I haven't seen this many people in a gym since a Tuesday night men's over 40 basketball league. Well, that many people? Naughty gets a side out. Naughty's putting a lot of junk on his ball. Dave, when he's hitting it, Charlie is finding, you know, himself having to paddle some of those Shots at Naughty's hitting directly at his feet because Naughty's reversing ten. and naturally in a lot of those jam shots. It's led for a couple setups. Short. Second serve. The whole handball tournament's here in this gallery. Charlie Shanks has shown that he can retrieve. That's an amazing two-wall V pass from Charlie Shanks and a fist pump. Dave, you know, a lot of players try and reset the rally by going up to the roof. Naughty Jr. says he likes to reset the rally by driving the ball right at his opponent's shoulder, forcing his opponent to play a ball on the way up in that kind of awkward range. Ten, so you'll see Naughty nine. hit those kind of shots. Try and find the hole in his opponent's swing. Wow, Charlie hits that hard. Naughty Take has it. to dive in to get that ball back, and it's either another point or the ball hit Charlie, one of the two. I didn't hear what the referee said. I believe that was a point for Charlie. Although, we'll wait for the official confirmation from our referee top eight pro, Emmett The Rock Pichot, who took fifth place here. <laughs> it's really quiet in this gallery. Oh, yeah. I think the gallery can hear our play-by-play. -play. Mm. It's a good reason for them to start making some noise. <laughs> Let's watch Charlie it's Shakespeare. A replay. It is a replay, so the ball did hit Charlie on the way up. 10, 9. That's a bad break for Charlie because that would have been a big setup. Oh, that's huge. It's long. That's why it's huge. It was a <laughs> it I was thought it could be a huge serve. back wall setup for Naughty, okay. but it ended up being long. I saw that Charlie overhit that ball. And does Charlie get up there, Dave? Is that an avoidable? We'll see the replay here. Charlie's actually just backing out to the... It's almost as if Charlie realizes it's an avoidable. I think you're right. Watch Charlie, he lifts. Yeah, that's certainly an avoidable. Charlie was flat on his belly and he stood up and that's the reason why Naughty just hit him there. Let's look at the replay one more time. Uh, Chris, back in the van. And you I mean, if you stayed down, he would have had a shot at it. But yep, they are giving so, yeah, the avoidable, and that's a correct call. Now you see Charlie lift up right there. I mean, you got up and right in between his legs. Yeah, change him. And there's going to be a glove change, and we're going to also take a quick break. It's or should we stay around nine, for this day? Ten, I think nine. we should. I okay, mean, let's do it. Do you have a, something you need to do? I wanted to pay the sponsors. Oh. But uh, that's oh. all right. I mean, who needs money? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the 13 through 16 players need money, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they, right. they've got Thanks for that. Yeah. Right. You're welcome. You're watching the Race for Eight. We are live here in Houston, Texas, where the show court is just this way, and uh, and the set is looking at, it, uh, at us this way. So uh, those at home want to know what's going on. We're actually in the set just looking at the court just mm -hmm. over the top of the cameras here, where some pretty amazing play. I actually kind of predict that this day will go into what I would say an overtime 
uh, since you have to win by two, I, I have a feeling that we could see a 17-15 or something like that here in this first game because they are sparring back and forth. Well, I certainly expect to see three games in this match. I wouldn't be surprised, Dave, if at least one of them did go into overtime. I'm looking forward, Dave, to perhaps one of the most exciting matches in the history of this race. And of course, Charlie and Nadia have already been a part of one of those most exciting matches that we've ever seen, as well as some of the other top guys. But Dave, with so much on the line here, both these guys so hungry for their first ever title. In fact, Charlie Shanks texting me just about a week ago, Dave, that he was excited to get the monkey off his back finally, after all these race stops where he's come so close and not quite grasp that gold. Yeah, uh, I also noticed that with Nadi Alvarado and some of these uh, players like Charlie Shanks, the uh, the Luis Morenos out there, Nadi creates instant rivalries with them, even if they don't play a lot of times against each other. So you see right now there's a rivalry that has begun or somewhat exists between Charlie and Nadi, and it's actually for the, in a, in a neat way, it's kind of for a, a, a kind of a good cause because you can see that there's some tension in there, and after each shot, the crowd's either ooing, awing, or clapping. Well, Nadi, Dave, is, is kind of like the New York Yankees or Notre Dame where, you know, you go in there and you love them and you hate them, but you really just want to beat them. And he's the kind of guy that really attracts people to watching because there is that polarization. And really, everyone loves Nadi, but when you're a competitor, you just want to beat them so badly. And, of course, you want to win every match, but there is that sort of added intensity to it, both because he's a living legend and, you know, he does like to push your buttons a little bit in there, Dave. Let's be honest. Oh, and Nadi was there. Nadi anticipated the corner there. He was about a half a step slow. He camped himself out just a little bit too far back there. He should have taken more of a front court position there. It would have been an easy paddle re-kill for him. 10-9. Now he knew he didn't have to hit that shot perfectly because he had Charlie on his left hip there, so he just drives the ball down the right side. Nine, ten. A huge setup here for Charlie. And Charlie puts a wrinkle on it himself. Yeah. He, re he reverses that ball. Breaks it Check back to the ball, Well, it's difficult right. there, Dave, to reverse because that ball was right on the side wall, but Charlie came on the outside of the ball there and was able to get enough action on it to Ten, force the air. Nine. Well, you said earlier that you talked to Charlie and he told you that he wasn't going to give you the trick of how he could keep that ball down on that serve, that, that double bounce to the back wall serve. What Check. Charlie does that's different than everybody else is he hits his reverse by going purely straight over the top of the ball. We hear a lot of guys that will reverse by cutting the ball Ten, from nine. the side of the ball. Charlie goes straight over the top as much as Point. he possibly can. I know physically he's not hitting directly over the top of the ball, slightly rotating off to the right just a little bit. I think that could explain, Dave, why you see Charlie hit some serves into the Eleven, ground because there's nine. no margin for error when you're coming straight over the top of it. And if you don't catch it quite perfectly, it will go straight into the ground. He just is able to, to have just a little bit different wrist action than even Luis Moreno. Now, Luis Moreno is hitting on the side, kind of maybe at a 45 degree angle. I would actually say that Charlie's getting closer to that 90 degree nine. angle with the way he hits it. And yet, if you see him in slow motion, his hand is cocked back really high. That's three straight aces right there, and we should see a timeout from Nadia Alvarado. Or maybe he will stall. Now he's asking for a towel. Here's Charlie going to go over and see if there is a need for a towel. Now that was a, a timeout by Nadia Alvarado Jr. there. And Dave, Charlie wasn't disguising those serves. He went three straight serves with the reverse down the left. All three were unreturnable. Watch. And let's, yeah, let's take a look here, Dave, at the hand action of Charlie coming straight over top of the ball. Now you'll see when his hand gets all the way to the top of the rotation, we'll stop the camera angle here. We'll stop the frame right when Charlie brings his right hand up to here, you see how his hand is straight down, facing straight down like. 30 seconds. He's just rotating straight around that ball. Dave, it almost looks like a bowling stroke. I mean, he's so close to his body, almost like if when you're going to throw a hook in bowling. Charlie's one of those guys that has a power reverse or mm -hmm. a power hook. Yeah. 
Luis Moreno you can put in that same realm, but Luis also knows how to throw the soft one. I've never seen Charlie hit a soft hook before. Charlie hits the, the power hook. Luis Moreno has that, that power hook that mixes in with that 40 percenter that he can do. But Charlie's is so effective because I believe he gets his power with this hook. I don't think he can hit the ball straight on a serve if he tried. And Nadi finally returns the serve, but it doesn't do him much good, Davis. Charlie first strikes his way to a game point. 14-9. Here it is, game point. Oh, and Nadi has the patience there, Dave, to slow himself down, compose himself, and puts that ball away in the right corner. We were all together nine at nine 14. just recently, and Charlie Shanks now has gotten four straight points. Sharp. And Dave, that noise you hear is the vacuum cleaner in the spinning room. Second serve. Nadi goes down. And, and then Dave, these guys Charlie. just continue to hit one another with the ball. That's well, the ninth time in this game, Dave, that one of these players has been hit by a back wall shot. They're both such great servers that they don't mind hitting the other opponent because they're going to go right back into the server's box. Nine fourteen. More than likely. I think Naughty, out of all the players, probably does it on purpose. Just like he fists the ceiling shots out Point. of the court on purpose? I've never said that. I don't know which statement is more Ten, ridiculous, 14. though. I have to really think about that. 10 serves 14. And Dave, Charlie has had problems in the past closing out games. We saw him with problems, and there's double digits for hitting one another. <laughs> but, you know, Charlie Dave has had problems closing out games. He seems to get just a little bit tentative, hoping that his opponent will miss. And Nadi's in a pretty 10, good spot 14. here, Dave, because there's not much pressure on him at 10-14. At he can just kind of freewheel it here. He knows Charlie's a little tense. And now, Dave, Nadi Alvarado, who's one of the great servers and shooters, is in the server's box with some momentum. The The... Game is really on his hand 11, here, Dave, 14. despite trailing 11 14. Well, I'm surprised that a rally ended without hitting somebody there. It's unusual, I know. And you see, Charlie has to put that away, but he doesn't. Charlie had the right corner there or down the right, and instead he hits it right at Naughty. And now you see Charlie just retrieving. And there's another example, Dave. Charlie just does not like to shoot the ball when he gets close to winning the game. I believe it's what cost him the U.S. Open in 2011. And that time, Dave, Charlie goes with a high percentage reverse pass. He'll still need to come in here, Dave, and convert. We've seen Charlie struggle to hit ace serves late in games, although he did hit three consecutive aces to get to 13. But Dave, I'm talking about that 13th, that 14th and 15th points is where it's a little bit more difficult to hit aces. I don't think so. No. Don't know what Naughty just asked there. Time out. Two second. Naughty Alvarado calling for a timeout here and he gets one with Charlie Shank serving at 14 to 11. This is the race for eight as we broadcast live in Houston, Texas at the Family YMCA for stop number three. That was Naughty's last timeout of this game, Dave. Players are given just two timeouts per game in these games to 15. Do they also have a 30-second timeout? No. Okay. So there will be no more stoppages of the clock here. Hopefully our referee asks to see the gloves of the players going into this timeout so that there's not a potential for a glove change. Charlie Shanks will be serving to get his 15th point when they return from this timeout that has seen some interesting uh, momentum changes. Earlier, it was Nadi Alvarado, who was down 2-8, to eight, came back and tied the score at 8. In fact, it even was tied at, at 9 at one point, Dave. And then Charlie Shanks went up 14-9, to nine, and now Nadi Alvarado's brought Charlie it back to 11-14, to with Charlie now serving.
this could be the very last serve of this first game right here with Charlie Shanks taking the first game if he gets one of those those aces. How many aces so far for Charlie Shanks? Charlie has hit six. So six of his 14, 14 11. points have come from freebie. It's, it's almost 50% of all of his serves that are that result in a point. But you see Charlie there now hitting Second a short, serve. and we haven't seen him hit many shorts. That's only the fourth short serve we've seen him hit. That's a good second serve. And Charlie, Charlie gets it there. Charlie takes down Nadia Alvarado in game number one, 15 to 11. There will be three minutes that come off the clock before these players are back into the court here for game number two. It's the race for eight, season three. Excuse me, season two, stop three, where we will go to Anchorage, Alaska in a couple weeks. And then after that, it'll be Denver, Colorado. You can get the full race schedule at WPHlive.tv. You can also find it right where you're watching this production underneath the video player. There will be a link for the race schedule. In the meantime, Dave Fink is going to go find Charlie Shanks, or it looks like Danny Bell. Dave? Dave, I'm here with Danny Bell. Danny, you're a 25-year veteran of pro handball, at least. You've seen some great action here so far today. What did you see there in that first game, Nadi coming up just short against Charlie Shanks? Well, I think he's right in there with Charlie Shanks. Charlie's serve has been so good all week, all weekend. This, so, but I think Nadi's going to got enough energy to, to be back in there. And Nadi's serve, that's the key. If, if, if they, that ball, that ball it, with that new ball, it's, is the serve. So hopefully Nadi will be back. Well, clearly, I think you're pulling for your old buddy and the veteran of the tour. He'd be the first guy to ever win a race event at 40 years old. He'll be 40 this year. But is there a difference in the styles of these two players? I mean, it seems like they're almost playing the same game in there. You're right about that. They are both killers. You don't see a lot of ceiling shots or whatever. They always go for the bottom board as low as they can go, you know, and that's what makes it exciting. It certainly is very exciting for the fans. You know, we've seen Nadi fall behind before. We saw him fall behind yesterday against Emmett. Today he had a disastrous first game against Aaron Garner, but it just doesn't seem to bother him. He comes back and even plays better. Yeah, Nadi's tough. He's been, uh, he's a veteran. You, you can, you can, you know he's got experience and he can come back and he, he's very, he's a lot more quiet than he used to be. So that makes him a big, big guy to, to win the tournament. Oh, you know, Nadi's won a number of pro stops. He hasn't won one since 2009, but Charlie Shanks has never won a pro stop. How difficult will it be to try and close out this match when he gets, or if he gets close to that 15th point in either of these next two games? It will be difficult. We could, we could see it, and even at the semifinal, Charlie had trouble, you know, uh, in the semifinal, his opponent was coming back, and Charlie had trouble closing the game. But Charlie's getting over there, you know, he's very ded dedicated to the game, and he's uh, really, uh, he's impre he, he impressed me a lot. It, it's gonna be a good showdown for the rest of the match. All right, well, Danny, thank you very much. We'll let you enjoy the rest of the match. Dave, back to you. Thank you very much. Danny Bell, not just a 25-year veteran, but 30 years on the pro circuit. At one point, he had 21 straight years of hitting every pro stop. Danny Bell giving us our insight as he sits courtside. You saw him refereeing that major match there in Ireland between Paul Brady and Luis Moreno. Danny Bell makes every tournament, even if he doesn't play in these main events, he's there courtside Sharp. watching as a fan. Well, it's it's just really cool to have Danny there, Dave. I mean, Second you don't serve. see Michael Jordan hang out at every NBA game. Point. Oh, an amazing serve there from Charlie Shanks. But Dave, Danny certainly One, is a tremendous zero. ambassador to the sport. And his insight, Dave, is, is just really great to have. You just don't want to referee one of his matches or have him referee one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget about that. Shanks gets a point two, here. Zero. Now at two to zero. And Dave, Danny knows just how hard it is to go from almost point. winning stops to actually making that next step and winning Three, stops. And Charlie's zero. done everything you can possibly do in Hold this it. sport without winning a pro stop. Let's check it. And Dave, he's now literally just minutes from capturing his first ever pro stop. Of course, Nadi Alvarado will have something to say about that if he can ever get into that service Three, box. Zero. Well, right now, Charlie sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, you don't want to look too far ahead, Dave, because there's a lot of handball yet to be played. 
but you have to like his chances, particularly when Naughty's making those kind of errors. 4-0. Short. Second serve. Oh, check it. Shanks starting the second game like he did Point. the first one. Now five to zero. I saw it good. Both disagree and short. Charlie did not like that. Second serve. Point. And the handball gods didn't agree with the line judges. Gave Charlie that point anyway. Here's that ball that five, was overturned. Zero. Referee saw it good. Line judges saw it short. It looked like it was short on replay. Oh, I thought it was good. <laughs> okay. Now Charlie Shanks, Dave, just completely on fire. And Dave, he may take the nerves out of winning this championship. If he builds a big enough lead, it might not even matter if he gets a little bit of a six zero choke factor towards the end. Check it, please. Charlie does back down into Naughty, but not too far. Just took about a step back. I've seen some avoidables being called on that play Six specifically zero. here on the race tour. Dave will have an exclusive interview with Charlie Shanks here in the booth after this match concludes. If he is the one that wins. If not, it'll be myself taking on Nadi Alvarado. Oh. You have to let me finish the sentence. Okay. I jumped the gun there. But fortunately, Dave, just like in Olympic competition, you're allowed Zero, one false six. start before being disqualified. I know you knew that. Yo, Naughty pins Charlie behind him there. And then goes for that kill shot and gets his first point. Hold it. Now Charlie doing a little bit to Naughty what Naughty does to him. Okay. One, six. No lead, Dave, is ever safe when you're playing against these top level players, but particularly when you're playing against these incredible servers who literally can run off five points without you even doing anything wrong. And that's a good shot from Naughty. Charlie went to the corner there. The problem is Naughty's in the center of the court, so you hit the corner kill, it comes right to him. Unless it's a flat rollout, Dave, it's just a big setup. You hear Steady Freddy Two, always talking six. about driving the ball down the walls. And that's something that people don't quite understand about what Luis Moreno does. Dave, who's not here at this event, but he's constantly driving the ball down the walls. So even if he's not hitting kills, you never have an opportunity to get set up and do anything with the shot. Six, two. That's a wow. great swing from Nadia Alvarado. Tremendous torque there and shoulder turn as he set up for that back wall shot, and he needed it from that deep. And you see Nadi really coil his shoulders there, Dave, preparing to hit that shot and Two, just six. uncoiled through the shot, very much like a golf swing. Point. And Dave, maybe Charlie Shanks starting to see that finish line a little bit too soon at six nothing and lost track of Three, what do you need six. to do? Well, these guys are playing a similar style of game here. It's all set up from this amazing serve. And whoever has the hot serve is going to win. Naughty told me before this match on a text message, I need to play inspirational. 
he might have said inspirationally, but I might be misquoting him, but he, he's saying that it. he needs to rise above. I'm not sure the rules, so I'm going to ask. There's going to be a, a little distraction here in the booth. What was the question? There's no slides, only on the serve. They're asking if the ball slides on the ground, if that's a replay, but it's not. Now everybody's talking so that, about it. That's how it is on the tour here. We don't stop for anything. Side out, sorry. Apologize. <laughs> now Nadia Alvarado is trash talking the referee just a little bit there for calling a point for Charlie when it was really a side out. Charlie serving six here at six three. to three. The rule with the WPH is that you play everything. And the only replay is if there's a house rule of some sort or if the ball slides on the serve. Nadi pops that ball toward the roof. Charlie has a huge setup. Nadi is unable to catch up. The old Nadi would have probably got over there with plenty of time, but the new one has to leave his feet. And Charlie just torques that ball. Nadi tried to go with sort of this little, little punch fist shot there that did not make the front wall. Surprised Nadi tries to punch those Charlie Shanks drives because you have so much less margin for error trying to punch the ball when it's that low. You see most players, they'd go with an open hand and either float the ball back or try an open hand paddle, re-kill. But the punch, Dave, a lot of times, if you don't catch it perfectly, will hit your fingers instead of the groove and the ball goes straight into the ground because it's hard Seven, to get under it. Three. I saw Nani try to punch an earlier shot from Charlie two rallies ago, I was surprised. Dave, you played both of these players. Which one hits the ball harder on their serve? I think Charlie's motion seems like it makes it look like it's harder, but then Nadi's ball just is, has this explosion to it that... Three, seven. Nadi's ball is almost like it's shot out of a nine millimeter. It just short. It has so much speed to it. But Charlie dis is so deceptive that his seems to be... You know, the first time you see Second it is right serve. when it leaves his body, comes off the front wall. Well, I think Charlie hits the ball harder during the rallies. On the serve, I think it's it's hard to tell. And Charlie punches that. That's a punch offensive two-wall winner. Amazing shot, yeah. really. He put it in the perfect spot. Seven, three. Charlie serving at seven to three. Chart. Ooh, that ball is close. And this crowd here, very quiet right now as they watch. Second serve. Charlie Shanks do what he does. And that's the problem with going in the corner kill. Nadi Jr. in the center of the court. And that's just a very easy shot for him. If Charlie drives the ball down the wall there, even if it's not a kill, Nadi's moving to his right. Really has no play other than Three, just to try and seven. float the ball back. The score here is three to seven. You heard the score from the ref. Right. And that's the time you use the corner kill, Dave, with your opponent behind you. Dave, do you feel that you can watch one of these matches as a coach and teach Four, somebody some seven. good strategy of what the pros do and how they can improve their game, much like they do in the NFL when they do tape sessions before a game? Well, if you're talking about trying to teach a beginner by watching this kind of handball, I think it'd be difficult because these guys are so advanced. And to try and teach a beginner to play like this might be a little bit overwhelming. In fact, I think it's overwhelming for anyone to watch this. These guys are just so good. Four, seven. Oh, and Naughty with Point. an amazing three quarter tomahawk front wall, side wall crack out. And he's going for that. Five, 
seven. And now Dave Naughty has scored six of the last seven points. He once trailed six nothing. The writing looked like it might be on the wall for Charlie Shanks' first six, ever championship. Seven. And now all of a sudden David Naughty with all the momentum. Chart. Second serve. Dave, the Collegiate National Handball Championships are February 20th through the 24th, Tempe, Arizona. And there's a lot of collegiate players here at this event and also a lot watching this live broadcast. I want to wish those collegiate players luck as Charlie goes around about there. A lot of those players are tuned in here. The United States Handball Association has that big collegiate championship tournament and those players are tuning in to watch some of the top players in the world during this race event. Seven, six. Trying to improve their games. Dave, I also want to congratulate you as we watched Charlie serve here at seven to six. That was short, no call. I saw it good. It was short by three inches. I thought it was good as well. One disagrees, the other disagrees. It was a short three serve. inches short. Second serve. Here's that replay. Maybe eight inches, sorry, I said three. Where was I at there? You were about to congratulate me for something which would be a first, so. Today, I don't know if uh, those at home caught this, but you put on one of the best clinics today hmm. that I have ever seen. We had how many, Eight, 22, six. 25 students something like from that, nearby yeah. schools come out, and it was all on the live broadcast here. Point. And then afterwards, those players stuck around and you did an interview session with them. It was really riveting. Dave, congratulations and thank you for doing thank that. Thank you. Watched it from the comfort of my hotel room on my Android system. Hmm. Nine, the volume six. down, but well, nonetheless, it was the best way to do it. Crystal clear. Nine to six is a serve. And that one will leave a mark. And Naughty's trying to sell the avoidable here, Dave. I'm, I'm actually going to call that one avoidable. Oh, and Naughty oh. sold it, Dave. Naughty the veteran wanted it. tour the pro falls for the oldest backwards. trick in the book, Dave. Naughty wanted it. He just walked up to take it. I just don't know how that's an avoidable. Charlie's on the right side of the court. The ball popped out Six, nine. off the left side wall. I mean, was Emmett Pichot just had there? The key, Dave, to selling it is it has to be somewhat believable for you to make the call, and oh. Naughty waited for it. He got a somewhat of a gray area avoidable and sold it. Six, nine. Dave Chapman would be impressed with that sale. Short ball. Oh, thought I'd get a reaction out of that. <laughs> not so much. I know he's not watching this, Dave, so Second I won't serve. say hello to him. But Gary Machart is, and I will say hello to him. Hope to see him in one of the stops for the re remainder of this season as Charlie Shanks makes a terrible the error there on a Nadi Alvarado Z serve. Yeah. And after a nice run there by Charlie Could've Shanks, shit. Nadi's cut myself. Now back in the box. Yeah, it's not cut bad. this lead to Just seven nine. And Dave, we actually have an injury up in the cat box. Our referee has cut himself. Opening up a new can of balls. I have no idea. Naughty, what do you where do you go? There's there's blood on the new ball now, Dave. We actually have paramedics climbing up the ladder now. The referee is in a actually Close perched door, above please. this court, Dave. You have to climb up a twenty step ladder. I can see the medics trying to get their first aid kits up there. Well which I won't is not be, easy. I won't be happy unless they put a tourniquet around that referee's neck. Hmm. I wish I got that, but I don't. But anyway, it looks like the paramedics, Dave, have made it just about halfway up that ladder. They're frantic, but, you know, they've been taught to stay calm at times like this, Dave. I don't want to say that on the 
The score is 6 9. And that should have been over. a seventh point, and but they're going to do over that. Well, no, that was a point. broken ball. Now, Emmett Pichot is still calling this match while he has his right hand extended, and it's being stitched up, Dave. It's really unbelievable. I mean, I saw the you know referees in the NFL, Dave, get knocked out by a charging linebacker, and he doesn't come back in the game. Our referee, Dave, staying in the game while being stitched up. Okay, thank you for covering that. We also had a camera angle on it for a short moment. Well, you couldn't see the Newly referee play. with that camera angle. He's up above that gallery. Six, nine. Score here is six to nine, not seven to nine. Oh, and a strange shot there from Naughty. <laughs> and it looked like Dave Charlie was going to get lucky with that wide left corner kill, but it just comes up short. You see Naughty trying to warm up this mm -hmm. ball. I agree. Dave, these balls are very lively, but it does take about Is three or four okay? minutes to get them warmed up. Once you do, they're very true. You want another ball? And Dave, we've seen this quite a bit in Nadi Alvarado Jr. matches. Just let me Nadi know. just not happy with the ball. 7-9. Score here is 7-9 now. I thought it was 6-9. to nine. Nine. And Dave, we talked about all these sort of idiosyncrasies these players have. They're upset that... They thought the game was to 11, not 15. Or not he's one of these guys, Dave, that will allow a new ball to bother him. Even though he's hitting great shots, he'll still continue to look at it. Eight, nine. Short. And you can see, Dave, this ball is not coming off the front wall with the same kind of pop since the last serve. ball did. It will warm up. It's going to take a couple more points, though. And Charlie Shanks, Dave, hitting a crack there, and that actually rolled out <laughs> flat. I don't know, Dave, if Nine, you put eight. that in your flat rollout category or not. It's <laughs> I but do it put it there. Okay. It doesn't oh. have to just be a flat rollout off the front wall. I remember that one. Mm-hmm. The truth. Eight, nine. Oh, an amazing serve from Naughty Dave. He's hit now two incredible reverses in a row. The first one hopped two feet away from Charlie nine, Shanks. That ball nine. rode the side wall. Charlie had no swing. Naughty's really feeling it right now, Dave. You can feel the energy. Wow. And he clips that corner and gets his 10th point. Charlie Shanks just seems to have gone flat right now. And this happens during matches, but Charlie was so close to capturing his first race title. Now, Nadi has the lead in game number two. And we've Ten, seen Dave Nadi's very dangerous in the late stages of these matches. Ten serves nine. Well, he wasn't dangerous in the last stage of the first game. Um, I'm talking later stages in second and third games and late into one game matches to 25. Thought it was interesting, Dave, getting Tyler Hamill's perspective during our last match about the change in scoring format. He said, hey, I like it. I think it benefits the older players and it's more exciting to watch for the okay. fans. Nine, nine. Ten. We're going to 15. It's nine to ten. You heard the score. Charlie, given everything he had on that one, unable to catch up to that ball because Naughty has that Even little sweat. slight reverse. It's not a big deal. It's not a three-footer, Dave. You've played against it. It's just enough, three, six inches, but he's hitting at 84, 85 miles an hour. You see how that ball just breaks slightly away. Charlie timed his dive, but then just can't catch up to it. 
But Dave, when either of these guys has the opportunity to step into the ball from the front court, it's going to be very difficult to return that shot. It's just so much power, so little time to react. And certainly the hop enhances that. Now he serves. 10, 9. I don't think it was short. I thought it was good. It'll be appealed by somebody. It won't be. A lot of these players, they forget if the rally extends to more than Nine, three ten. shots to appeal to serve. That's a good return from Nottie, but Charlie pops that to the ceiling. The Irish are actually born with that shot. Dave. That was a really good rally, Dave. We saw tremendous power, great defense, and then Charlie Shanks ends the rally with a beautiful kill shot. Here's the replay brought to you by Simple Green. And I'm Dave Nani just a little bit slow yeah, getting out of the blocks there. Sometimes put my finger down. 10, 10. We're all together at 10. Ball it. WPH Victory Party will be immediately following this finals match over at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Hmm. Where Charlie Unfortunately, Shanks I won't be there. I wasn't invited. So. 10, 10. Can't go somewhere. I'm not invited. I'm not a crasher. Okay. Luckily, you're staying at the same hotel just a couple floors up. No. While everybody is down there and you can hear the excitement. Well, and there's all also that. a space camp going on. Doesn't mean I can just go there and hang out it's with true. those kids. That's true. I've 11, actually invited 10. myself to that space camp. 11 serves 10. We're going to 15. And that's a lazy shot from Naughty David. I've seen him try quite a bit. Oh, that's yeah. the longest ride of the match, Dave. 23 shots. Charlie Shanks misses a very easy kill. But, Dave, you see Naughty try and take that left hand paddle shot into the right corner. That's the kind of shot you hit in practice when you're just messing around. But the problem is, Dave, that shot creeps in to your tournament game. 11. Naughty does win that rally, though. Naughty serving here at 10 to 11. Call it. That's that shot right there that you're talking about where Naughty takes it on the way up and usually goes into uh, a corner. Right. This time he went right back uh, at him. He moved so. a bit and there was really no time at all. But according to you, Dave, no time at all has nothing to do with the call. That's what you've told me. <laughs> I'm just repeating it. Dave, this gallery is 10, literally 11. 20 people deep. This is like when I tried to watch Tiger Woods at the U.S. Open 2008. He lost to Angel Cabrera by a stroke. I couldn't even see Tiger. There were just so many people. That's what these people are experiencing now, Dave, trying to catch a glimpse of these two superstars. There's been three fish shots in a row. Followed by that ceiling setup where Charlie goes down low and Nadi's unable to get there. And there's a side out. Nadi's a little flat-footed there, Dave, and that's something that John Bike has talked about. And Nadi knows it, that he gets a little <laughs> flat-footed. He doesn't react to hops and bad bounces the way he should. Eleven, ten. Point. Oh, there's an amazing serve from Charlie Shanks, who served mostly down the left. I saw it good. Both of you. <laughs> Charlie finally gets a appeal call in his favor. Uh, let me see the backside. Uh, you can call timeout if you want, but they're they're not wet. Charlie Shanks I mean, three points the away. There. I mean, that's not even from that's winning not even a race coming stop. around the glove. 
Well, that one, I don't know how that happened. What did I do? <laughs> it must have. You can, you can change it. And Dave Naughty really lobbied to know, change maybe those put gloves. His hand I near think. Thigh or something, but. Naughty <laughs> lobbying to get a glove change, and he finally got one from the referee it after like he showed the glove, and it didn't seem to be too wet. And then he showed it to him again, and all of a sudden it was wet. And the if referee. If it doesn't said, fit, you must change them. Or I mean, <laughs> if it. Wait. Sorry. I believe what. But Naughty did is that he might have touched his shirt or something with the glove and made it wet and then showed the referee, yeah. well, it well, is I, wet. I didn't want to accuse him of that. I'm not accusing him. I said what he could have done. Oh, okay. okay. That's why I said the word could have. Yeah. Well, you exonerate yourself with that. Well, I pretty much do that all the time. I do a lot of coulda, woulda, coulda, if, ifs. Hmm. But in this case, Naughty Alvarado does get that uh, two-minute glove change. This is the finals of the race for eight. We're in Houston, Texas at the family YMCA, as you can see. Very YMCA-ish here, as Houston apparently is still well, still 12 o'clock in the afternoon here with the yeah. great uh, backdrop that we have. Sun hasn't completely gone down yet. I'm just glad I don't have to take down this set, Dave. I mean, this is literally taking up the entire gymnasium here. I mean, you can <laughs> see this, Dave. This is normally, Dave, a full-court basketball court, and look what they've done to it for us, of course. The second this match ends, Dave, my headphones will be thrown down like they always are, and I'll be out of this building faster than Andy Nett after losing a playoff match. Okay. And then hopefully we won't ever see you again <laughs> well, when this takes place? <laughs> well, you can always hope. Okay. We are in the middle of a two-minute glove change now. It's uh, stop number three here on the tour. Right after this, we're going to go to Anchorage, Alaska, February 14th through the 16th where we'll have the same sort of format. The top eight have already been announced that if you want to qualify on the Pro Tour, you can do so there on the leading Thursday before the tournament and get into the main draw. And then after that, we'll go to Charlie's Denver, serving. Colorado. That'll be on March 7th through the 10th. And then off to Salt Lake City. And then we'll finish the race season as we always do at the Players' Championship in Seattle, Washington. Well, those are four incredible upcoming stops. They've each one of them unique and spectacular in their own way. Of course, we're looking forward to seeing Matt Thorpe, one of the great sponsors in Alaska, as well as the Z-Man. Jake play. Plummer will be in 12, Denver. 10. And Charlie oh. Shanks had a great look at that kill shot there, Dave, that would have brought him to 13-10. And he just short on that. Charlie should put that away. Probably does 12, put it away 99 10. out of 100 times. That time he left it way up. Oh. And Naughty with a terrible error there, Dave. I was about to say, if you're Naughty Alvarado and you know Charlie Shanks is trying to win his first ever pro race title, 13, you have to make 10. him hit the shots. You can't give him any points. You have to figure out a Short way to ball. get all these serves back Check it, and at the very least make him execute kill shots. Don't give him anything by putting the ball in the ground. And Naughty just did that. Charlie Shanks now just two points from winning his first ever race title. Second serve. And Dave, I think you'll see a huge emotional reaction here from Charlie Shanks if he's able to finally get this monkey off his back. It would be Dave, his first yellow jersey. And Naughty with an incredible dive. Dave, Charlie has to put that shot away. I mean, that ball was sitting on a tee for him. And sometimes, Dave, those are the most difficult shots when you've got so much time. But Naughty lays out perfectly for that, Dave. And not that that's a hinder, but just being on the floor there, Dave, forces Charlie Shanks to take a different angle at that ball. And Charlie just unable to catch up to it. Charlie Shanks now finds himself returning the serve, and we can see uh, Nadia Alvarado get hot in one of these serves, which we saw earlier today and for the most part of this tournament. But remember, Dave, that was a very easy shot for Charlie. He doesn't put 10, it away. 13. Now Nadia is right back in this game. Score is 10 to 13. Oh, and he almost got that deep crack, and he did get it. Well, Dave, this is so similar to that match that Charlie Shanks lost to Naughty the first time they played at the Plumber event, 11, where Charlie 13. won the first game easily, had match point in the second game, and just could not put it away. Also had match point to tiebreaker. Now he stays down there. Oh, and Charlie, cool as the other side of the pillow there. 
Dave taking his time in rolling that ball out two inches high. Dave, this is one of the biggest crowds we've seen. Right back to your left there. Or to your I right. believe the biggest right. crowd we've yeah. seen on the race break, too. This is a really big crowd. Upstairs, downstairs, and there's a 13, lot of young 11. players, a lot of college players in the crowd, too. And then now Nadi gets the side out. Well, Charlie did not hit a good serve there, and he misplays that return. Thought he could take that off the back wall, but it just didn't carry to the back wall. 11-13. Chart. Nadi's timing was a little bit off there on that serve, Dave. His front foot and his swing didn't quite Second come serve. together, and that's why he hit that about 10 inches short. You know, Nadi does not want to engage you with long rallies. Point. Oh, and he gets that little sneaky behind the back. That's one of the first times we've seen that here. And Dave, very, a lot of courage there for Nadia Alvarado on a second serve. That's what I was just 12, about to say. Yeah. I mean, it's crunch time. He almost has to pull something out, and he did, 12-13. Sure. Oh, and he went for that other one, too, on the right side and almost got in this place would have second would have serve. popped. The roof would have flown right off the pavilion here at the YMCA. She Nadi almost gets it again. Hits another second serve ace. But Nadi gets the big setup, and now Charlie Shanks is just really starting to tighten up here, Dave. And you can almost feel what he's thinking. What do I need to do to win a race title? I've played so well. I'm two points 13, from the title. 13. And now nothing is going my way. Short ball. And Nadi now three consecutive short serves to the right. The last two second serves, Davies hit him behind himself to his left with the reverse. Second serve. This time it looks like he's going to go with a Z serve. Nice return from Charlie. Thought he had trouble with that earlier. Thought he playing really far back, Dave. Well. You know, Dave, Nadi Alvarado Sr. has told you so many times, don't hit the three-wall shot. It gives your opponent too much time and too many opportunities. That time, Nadi does hit a three-wall shot, hits a pretty good one, but the ball pops up just the six inches off the back wall, and Charlie Shanks takes care of it. Now, remember, Dave, if Charlie Shanks loses that rally or doesn't execute that kill shot, Nadi Alvarado Jr. is serving to win this second game. Instead, Charlie back in at 13 all, still two points from this championship. Remember, you have to win by two here. <laughs> Naughty trying to throw Shanks off here. Yes. Well, I'm assuming that's what he's 13, trying to do. 13, 13. We're all together at 13. Terrible serve. Oh, look at that return. And well, the crowd just loves Naughty here, Dave. Well, they love seeing great shots, but that was just a terrible serve there from Charlie Shanks. Didn't stay down on it, lifted it. The ball hung up off the side wall, and Dave, that was 13, a huge 13. setup. She has over the line, and that's a reverse right there. And if Charlie's to win this match, or I should say this game, it will go into overtime because Nadi's broke into that 14th point. Nadi now at game point here to go into a tiebreaker. Charlie no longer 14, two points from 13. winning this title. He's at least three points, and now it looks like, Dave, we're heading into a third frame. Short ball. And Dave, Nadi just seems to elevate his game when he's behind, particularly serve. with his back up against the wall and his opponent about to clinch the match. Does he go behind himself here? He does high. That was not a good serve. Charlie doesn't do anything with it, though. A flat roll right there from Charlie. Now if Charlie scores Remember one more it's point. Win by two, guys. And I'm glad our referee said that because, I you know, was starting to worry players, myself. Yeah. These players are the type to forget. 13-14. Charlie scores one more point. Oh, that was just over the line. Charlie off his back foot there. Naughty. Could have put that away, but now he's got a big setup. Wow, this one is going overtime. 
They see all that congestion down there. No call from the ref. He let Naughty play it, and then Naughty hits the ball into the ground. Now tied at 14. 14-14. Nice serve from Charlie again. Charlie Day, one swing from capturing his first ever race title. Charlie certainly battling some nerves, but who wouldn't, Dave, trying to claim their first ever title? If you're not nervous at a time like this, Dave, then you're not a true competitor. It doesn't matter how many titles you've won, Dave, there's always that added nervousness trying to close out a championship for particularly here for Charlie Shanks, it would be his first. It looks like he might get it here, Dave. He needs one point. Naughty had all the momentum there. That is your first timeout. Naughty calling a timeout here. Now, Dave, they've done studies in the NFL how effective it is to actually ice the kicker. They found that the kicker makes the same percentage of field goals, whether he's iced or not iced. Now, this is very similar, Dave, to icing the kicker, where Nadi Alvarado is trying to make Charlie Shanks think about this for an extra 60 seconds before he comes in and serves for the match. I know, Dave, that maybe you think this could actually ice Charlie Shanks. We shall see. Charlie's come out of timeouts and played really good handball in this match already. I, I just believe that it's, it's a good veteran move because it, it does throw Charlie off a little bit of his momentum. Now, we, we tracked it before. Uh, very early on in the race season last year, and even before that on the old Pro Tour, we would track some of these results, and we noticed that when a person did call a timeout, the the uh, person that was serving would, would get a side out, and the, the, the person that was serving would, uh, or not serving, or the person calling the, the timeout would actually uh, have the opposite thing happen to them. And we saw that uh, sort of percentage take place uh, throughout the year, so maybe Nadi's going to try to tap into that. I think the percentage was something like 65 to 70%. It was actually, it was actually 78%. The person that called the timeout actually lost the next rally. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens here. I found it hard to explain it, but let's see if Charlie can get this last point. And this could be a setup for Charlie right here. He goes for it. Naughty passes him. Charlie doesn't and get to it. Naughty is now serving. Dave, if Charlie does not win this match, he will not sleep for two months. He had one of the easiest setups that you could ask for to win this match. He doesn't put it away, Dave, and he gives Naughty another look, and Naughty takes advantage. 14-15. Just over the line, and there's a point now tied at 15. Naughty's trying to sell it with the line judges. I did not see it slide. Well, there's no slides on the did floor Did you guys anyway. see it slide? No, on that's the serve, the there is a slide. Not on the floor, though. 15, I thought it was 15. just on the side wall. No. Don't remember reading that in the rule book. Uh, I'm still waiting to see that rule book. We're all together at 15 here. No matter what happens. Oh, oh and that may <laughs> just be the break that Charlie needs because Naughty would have been serving for this second game. And Charlie wants that ball in his hand right now, and Naughty's just holding on to it as long as he can. Played Naughty Jr. enough. That kind of stuff 15, doesn't really 15. bother you. As well, much Charlie as came out and said it did bother. Yeah. And Charlie oh, was there. That's out. one of his favorite shots, Dave. Coming in with the left hand paddle, and that time he just makes a complete I'm watching for it. hand air. Fifteen, fifteen. I predicted early on in this first, this second game here that this would go into overtime, Dave. And Charlie skips a very easy shot there, Dave. Sixteen fifteen. This is game point. Naughty goes for it. That's that wide corner kill opportunity. Dives down. And now it's a side out. And Dave Naughty anticipated that shot perfectly. 
looked like the ball just went right through his hand. I mean, he was there before the ball bounced twice. I think Charlie Miss hits this left corner kill just slightly. Didn't sound like it was perfect contact. And you see Dave Nottie's there. I know, he, almost like he overjumped it. Yeah. I mean, the ball just kind of went right under his hand. Hard to say what happened there. Charlie's serving here at 15-16. Point. Wow, that was an amazing wow. ace. That wasn't too good. What's that? What's that? I don't, I don't think I did. I don't think I did, I called 15-16. Not he distracted okay. there because he thought the referee called the wrong score. 16, 16. <laughs> he wouldn't have got that serve anyway. Okay. And secondly, that's just part of the shenanigans. It's another good serve from Charlie. There's that white corner that Nadi goes for. Oh, and Nadi misses that day by about an inch, and that's an easy shot for Nadi Alvarado. Now it's another match point for Charlie Shanks. I believe Davey served for this match twice now. This will be his third time. Vantage, Charlie Shanks. 17, 16. Let's see what he does here if he goes to the left. Short ball. Uh, he feels hot over there to the right. He got the ace earlier. I thought if he would have snuck out over Second to the left, serve. he might have. Got Nadi going the wrong way. Let's see what he does here on second serve. And he gets a crack. Nadi digs it out. The ball kind of slides. And Charlie has it again, Dave, on his hand. That's a very easy shot for Charlie Shanks. That's the second huge setup Charlie's missed with his right hand with match point. Sixteen, seventeen. And that's a shot Charlie Shanks makes 99 out of 100 times. Short ball. Oh, and Nadi is going to take a long I walk here, Dave. Ball. One agrees. Nadi threw the head back and took the long Second walk serve. there, Dave. The only thing he didn't do was take off his glasses. That's kind of the trifecta. <laughs> He's looking for the call. Let's see if he goes behind himself here on that second serve. And he does. Goes for that deep crack. It's going to be a setup with the left hand. He has a Charlie pin. Oh, oh. Goes down and it's going to be replayed. No, no, no. Charlie's looking for an avoidable. You know, Dave Naughty has not been accurate with his left-hand so. back wall kills. He hasn't executed one left-handed back wall kill in this match. And you see, Dave, this is a good opportunity. He doesn't put it away, though. 16, 17. Naughty thought that ball was a, a free point. Charlie thought it was an avoidable. It's going to be a big setup for Naughty. Oh, and a great shot for Naughty. And Dave, if you're Charlie Shanks, what you have to tell yourself is pretend this game is the 30 when you have those match points, and then you're not so worried about trying to score that 18 point or whatever point it is to close out the match. But you can tell, Dave, that he's pressing when he has those match points. Just not the same player, not the same stroke. Naughty trying to tell Charlie the ball was a little bit wet. 17, 17. Charlie didn't like it. Naughty just shook his head at him. Just over the line. Point. And now it's another game point for Naughty Alvarado. But you haven't seen Charlie try and go to the ceiling with a fist return in this entire match. He goes to it at 17 all. 18, 17. Not the right time to experiment with a new shot. Oh, no like screen, screen. called. Oh, Charlie with a great shot. Doesn't take any chances there, Dave, trying to feather the ball into the corner. Just crushed one straight down the right with a nice reverse on it. And I think Naughty thought that was going to be a screen also. He stopped. Uh, I'm surprised that there's no yeah, talking yeah. back and forth to the referee because that was clearly a screen. I'm surprised the ref let him play through that. Dave, people tuning in at home might think 
this is a, a really close second game, but we're actually in overtime right now. We've played a 15, but you have to win by two. Both guys have had opportunities to close out this game. Neither obviously has been able to do so thus far, but if Charlie Shanks is to win this second game, he'll have to score at least 20 points. That means three more points for Charlie if he were to win the second 17, game. 17, 18. Crowd on the edge. Oh, that's a deep crack right there. I did not see it slide. Oh, no, he's not going to like that call. And they didn't either. So now we're all together at 18. I was watching it. I didn't see it. And you have to remember, Dave, that Charlie put so much spin on the ball that when it hits the side wall, it does 18, seem to slide. 18. But it's not because the ball of the side wall is wet. It's just the amount of spin he puts on the ball. Point. And two consecutive aces now for Charlie Shanks. And here he is serving for the fourth time 19, to win 18. this match. No timeout from Nadia Alvarado. This could be the big setup for Charlie. Here it is. And he gets his win. And look at that emotion from Charlie Shanks. He gets his win. Race stop champion. Houston, Texas, Charlie Shanks. Y'all, look at that. And the crowd loves what they're seeing. Great plan. <laughs> this Just round of applause here from this crowd as Charlie comes out of the court here. Look at that emotion from Charlie Shanks. An amazing match, Dave. Both guys played at such a high level, and you love to see a match end with a beautiful shot like that. Charlie Shanks, a patented Irish whip, flat kill off the back wall from 34 feet. Amazing, really, the emotion here at this uh, facility at the Family YMCA in Houston, Texas, as Charlie Shanks and Nadia Alvarado go into overtime and just sparred back and forth. Both of them had at least three chances to put it away. Nadia Alvarado had a, at least three chances to bring it into a tiebreaker. Charlie Shanks had at least three, maybe even four chances to win the match. And finally, Charlie Shanks does it as we are going to try to pull him in to this booth. He's going to try to exit right now. Dave, uh, let's go back to the court there. You go get Charlie uh, very quickly. And I'll have him put my headset on. Amazing win for Charlie Shanks. Charlie, welcome in to the booth here. First of all, congratulations. Just an outstanding performance. You've been so close for so long. You've been in race finals. You've been in US Open finals. Now you've finally gotten over that hurdle. You've taken down Nadia Alvarado Jr. You played absolutely spectacular handball. How does it feel to be a race champion? <laughs> um, it's nice to get a pro stop win, you know. Um, when you look back at the, the history of Paul Brady and Tony Healy and Owen Kennedy when they first started traveling to the States and, you know, and uh, at home for young aspiring players, that was kind of what young Irish players wanted to do, to go to the U.S. and play in pro stops and play in the Nationals, play the U.S. Open. So uh, it's nice, you know, like Paul and Tony have both won the U.S. Open and U.S. Nationals and pro multiple pro stops and, and what have you and, uh, and Robbie McCarthy, U.S. Open. So it's nice to be the fourth Irish person to win a U.S. tournament. You're always so stoic in the court, but after you killed that last ball off the back wall for the 20th point in the match, we saw so much emotion from you. How much does that mean to you? Uh, I suppose it, it means a lot because um, I've been in the, I've been living in New York for about a uh, year and a half now, and uh, I've been competing in all these tournaments, and I've got to you know a couple of U.S. Open finals and a couple of U.S. National finals, and and, and fell at the at the final hurdles, so. Uh, it's nice to, you know, get a pro stop win. You know, I've, I've beaten all the guys, and uh, except for Paul Hade, Paul Brady, so you know, it's nice to get, um, it's nice to get, uh, you know, a pro stop win under my belt. Well, you texted me a couple of weeks ago, and you said you couldn't wait to see me here and get the monkey off your back. The monkey now is finally off your back. <laughs> it has to feel great. It's almost like a. a I don't remember that text. <laughs> <laughs> I can show it to you. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Um, you know, after, you know, I went home at Christmas. I spent two weeks back at home at Christmas, and I thought a lot about, you know, I'd be moving home permanently in July, and uh, I didn't want to be going back home not having won, won one of these pro stops, you know, having competed for so long. 
and uh, you know particularly after last year where I struggled a lot with fitness uh, you know suffered like chronic elbow pain and uh, I just try to f you know just try to fight it you know just play on you know during it like so uh, I've got that sorted now and uh, you know I'm looking forward to the next pro stops. Take us through those four match points you had. You finally converted on your fourth match point. You had to go into overtime. In fact, Nadia Alvarado actually served for that game three times. You, you were able to take him out. It seemed like maybe a little bit tight just trying to close out those matches. You had two right hand setups. One of them you skipped, one of them you just didn't put away. What, what are you thinking about? Uh, well, Nadia was putting a lot of pressure on me. You know, uh, he was moving up in. He was waiting for that. Uh, he was w waiting for that kill. You know, he knew. He, he, you know, when you're, when I was just, you know, I was hitting good shots, and all of a sudden he was there, you know. So he's, he was anticipating where I was going to be playing the ball, and uh, so it was always going to be tough. It had to be a perfect shot all the time, or else, uh, you know, he was there getting it. And and with Nadi, he's going to rekill, you know, uh, particularly on the serve. You know, if I had a good serve, he's going to, you know, pelt it back towards the bottom brick. How hard it is to play a guy that really has almost exactly the same style as you? I mean, you guys kept the ball no more than a foot or two off the front wall, and a lot of times at about an inch off the front wall. Both of you guys have amazing serves. I mean, you know, even when you have that 6-0 lead in the second game, he's very capable of coming back and running off eight or ten straight points just as you could. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he. the tough thing about playing Nadi is he kills the rhythm of the game. You know, he completely kills the rhythm. So whenever I went 6-0 up, I knew, you know, there was a long way to go yet, you know, uh, he just, you know, he can he controls the pace, and you know, it's, you know, he he, he plays very smart and uh, and plays to the rule book and and pushes the boundaries maybe just a little bit, and uh, he definitely broke up the play a lot and got me out of my rhythm, and you know that, you know that's what he has to do, and he did it, and um, and he came back at me, you know, and you know he's got as good a serve as me, and it, it was just perseverance in the end. You mentioned the rest of the stops throughout the remainder of the season. You're now within range of capturing that number one ranking. How important is that to you heading into Alaska and then Denver and Salt Lake City and the Players' Championship to take that number one ranking back to Ireland? <laughs> It'd be nice to go home in July, having you know be, be going home being ranked number one. Uh, that would be that would be nice, uh, you know. But it's about winning the stops. If I win the stops, you know that will come. Okay. Well, Charlie. It was amazing watching you play. It's been great watching you play over the year and a half thus far the race tour. You've certainly deserved this race championship, and we're going to look forward to seeing a lot more of you throughout this year in, in Alaska in three weeks. Congratulations. Thank you. For Dave Fink, Dave Vincent, Linda Manning, Chris Garad, Lolita Vincent, Ashley Moeller, and the rest of the WPH staff, we'll see you in Alaska. Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, Mama's going to bring it home. Mama's okay. going to bring it home. Okay. 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 Come on. Watch this guy. Oh, oh I... backwards. Oh. Woo! Don't. Oh. Okay. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh. No? Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Oh. Oh, 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 my God. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. Yeah, Mom. All right. Let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might Come surprise ahead. you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle.